Hi, I'm Vijit, and with me I have Derek. We work on uh, the open source um, platform called NumaFlow that is um, uh, open sourced by Intuit. And this talk is about how we simplify stream data processing at scale at Intuit using de declarative Kubernetes native technologies. That, uh, we'll start about a little bit about Intuit, then uh, stream processing challenges, what's NumaFlow, and a demo to show how it all comes together. This is Intuit's mission, powering prosperity around the world. Technology at Intuit, a brief uh, scale we work at. We have 100 million customers. We move billions of dollars in customer refunds, trillions of invoices processed, and millions of users using payroll. It shows the scale at which we operate and the technology that we are, and the technology that powers this. We are a, a native development platform. Um, we do millions of predictions a day and so forth. There is a talk for. It's um, very specific to AI today at 345. Um, so you, please attend if you want to know more about how we do it. We are a big in open source collaboration, and we were CNCF end user award winners in 2019 and 2022. Uh, we have contributed a lot of open source. Argo is the most popular one among those. And uh, we will also talk about NumaFlow today. We are also part of end user community for open source tech. Now I'll get to the main talk that is stream processing. So what exactly is stream processing, right? So I, I'll go through a very simplified architecture. It all starts with um, reading data from a source. Stream by itself means that it is an unbounded source, meaning it never ends. You keep reading Kafka, Pulsar, SQS, it doesn't matter. And any protocol, MQTT, right? You read data from a source, and then you do some processing. This processing could be as complex as it can be or simple as it can be, and it says multi-step processing. For example, you are doing simple transformations to very complex machine learning algorithms. And then you send it to a destination. For example, you might write it back to Elasticsearch, some, R uh, some RDBMS, or again to Kafka for somebody else to consume. So this unit is what we call it as a stream processing that starts with the source and the sync and multi-step processing in between. Let me just give you some real-world examples. These are from both from Intuit and also from the community who, are, who is using our project. First is an e-commerce real-time recommendation system. This is more about personalization and systemization. When you operate on a website, uh, you want to give the right recommendations based on what the user is searching. For example, if you are into a clothing uh, website, as you start searching about, let's say, genes, then the personalization changes to tailor to what you need. Second is IoT data processing. This is, we have few users use um, NumaFlow on edge for di digital signal processing and radio uh, signal processing. This shows that the solution is very lightweight and can run on edge systems. Real-time analytics is something which we use as Intuit a lot. This is for doing analytics or, and uh, group buys and things like that. And also fraud detection. This is ML, where you, you either use uh, traditional ML models or a uh, little more complex ones to understand whether the user behavior or the intent is fraudulent or not. The key point is that stream processing is the backbone of modern technology. But unfortunately, the way it is, there are a lot of challenges to get this done. First and foremost is usually there's a, um, a uh, conception. It, uh, to a decent extent, it is true that unless you are a data engineer, you cannot do stream processing. This is because most of the frameworks out there are very JVM-based. Second is complex integrations. Uh, there's a difference between running on Kubernetes versus natively on Kubernetes. Um, for example, you could deploy a Flink on Kubernetes using a Kubernetes operator, but it does not understand Kubernetes as it is. It was built with a different resource model and things like that, which is very different from Kubernetes. And lastly, scaling. Um, Kubernetes by itself is more a deployment of one entity at a model. It does not understand streaming as a concept. It cannot understand, let's say, when you have connected entities like source, processing, and things, you need to scale these di things differently by understanding the entire semantics of streaming, not just a point in time scaling. So that's where uh, NumaFlow comes into play. 
The way we have seen um, the NUMA approach is to an is more like serverless for stream processing. That means that we want to enable developers to use the framework without worrying about a lot about what's happening behind the scenes. To start with, we started off with language agnostic. This means that stream processing is for everyone. It's not just for data engineers or for JVM users. It should be for Golang, Python, Rust. It doesn't matter, right? It should be open up for everyone. Second is deep, decoupling sources from things. If you look into most of the processing, users are more interested about the payload rather than where they got the payload from. Nobody says, oh, good, I got the data from Kafka. Rather, they are more interested in what is inside the payload rather than whether it came from Pulsar, SQS, SNS, or even from an HTTP endpoint. It's, it's always the logic is with processing or the business logic is with the data. And lastly, we wanted to do scalable and abstracted infrastructure. What it means is we didn't want users to worry about scaling. It should auto-scale by itself, no matter how complex your, uh, your graph of processing is. It can understand, it should be able to do Q-depth analysis, and it should be able to have an infrastructure that is very close to fire and forget. You have a pipeline running, because these are unbounded systems that never finish. So you uh, kick off a job, let's say start a new flow pipeline, there will be pod migration, node migration, things like that. But your processing should work no matter what. So just to give a quick intro on one line intro, Numaflow is a Kubernetes native, open source, language agnostic, real-time stream processing data platform. Now I will hand it over to my good friend and co-maintainer of Numaflow to show you a demo of how it happens. Thank you, Vijay. So uh, we have talked about Numaflow a lot. I, I think probably you're thinking, hey, this thing sounds interesting, but can you show me how it works? And now it's the time. So we're going to do a live demo to showcase how to use Numaflow to do stream data processing, right? Everyone likes demo, right? Yeah, nothing beats a live demo. So let me set some context for this demo. Assume we are running an e-commerce platform. We're selling a lot of different products from different categories. Could be like electronic devices, could be toys, could be clothes, shoes. And you have, uh, we have a lot of orders coming from different clients, from web browser, from cell phone apps. And we want to do some streaming analytics for those streaming orders. We want to see products in which category was the most popular in the past one hour, even one minute, right? We want to see you know, what's the revenue of this category and how many sold items in those categories. So this is a very common use case in streaming analysis, that by, under, by understanding this kind of information, it will better help us to, uh, pro, uh, to prepare or adjust the business strategies. Right? So to do this, properly you're going to end up with you know, having something like a Kafka topic and then have those uh, streaming orders sent to the Kafka topic and then have a, you know, asynchronized data processing pipeline do some map reduce operations and get the result, get the aggregate result, right? So here's my demo plan. So I'm not gonna focus on the backend server I mentioned in the previous uh, diagram, but instead I'm gonna have a, a small piece of code simulating those kind of streaming orders right into a Kafka topic. And then I'm gonna create a, a Numaflow pipeline to ingest the data from the Kafka topic and then do some map reduce operation. And then, then we're gonna verify if the reduced, uh, if the aggregate information is something we we expect. Right. Uh, quickly looking to uh, the Numaflow pipeline topology. So in Numaflow, each data processing step is called a vertex. We have three different kind of vertex in Numaflow. One is called a source and sync, right? That's easy to understand. The source is used to ingest data from a data source. Sync is right to some data, data, uh, data syncs. And there's another one called a UDF, which stands for a user-defined function. And for this specific use case, we're going to have a you know, building Kafka source a vertex, which is used to consume the data from the Kafka. And you don't need to write any code to consume the data. You just use some configuration, say, hey, what's your Kafka brokers, and what's your topic or consumer good? You'll get those, those data ingested your pipeline automatically. And then this will be followed by a UD, UDF vertex, which uh, we're going to do it here uh, for data enrichment and some sort of you know, map operation. And then we're going to do a reduce operation to aggregate the data. Uh, here we're going to aggregate per category of the, uh, of the sold uh, product, right? And then in the end, for uh, the aggregated data, we're going to use uh, another building sync, a Kafka sync, to write to another Kafka topic. 
And before going to the demo, let's also look into the data transformation in this pipeline. So this is the, this is the you know, original order information, as I mentioned earlier, is the, you know, something we, I you know, randomly generated for the, the order. So there's order ID and the order time, and there are a list of uh, sold items in this order, and somehow there's no, you know, there's no price, there's no product, uh, product category information in this order information. And there's, order, and there's only a product ID over there. So what do we need to do in the in, you know, map operation? We're going to do a data enrichment to add those missing information, like pr price, like a, a category ID, and, and name. And think about the original order. You actually can have one order containing multiple uh, products, and those products could be from different categories. So in this case, we want to do aggregation on this category. We need to do a flat map into map operation, so which means we're going to convert one order information into multiple, and each one represents one category. And then in the end, uh, after reduce, we're going to see the aggregate information like this. We're going to see uh, you know, window start time, window end time. Here, we're, we're doing like a six, uh, one minute window. So you're going to see like a start time, end time here in the category information, and also what is the sold items number and what is revenue. Okay? So the data transformation for, for uh, the demo I'm going to do. And now let's go to the demo. Uh, for this demo, I actually, uh, I'm doing this demo in my local laptop, so I'm running a K3 cluster on my laptop. So I already created, I already created a new pipeline here for this demo, uh, just uh, before I came to the stage. Is uh, not good enough? Okay, anyway. Maybe it's not easy to read. So I have a, a order, order GN application. Which is the one I mentioned earlier that uh, you know I have a small piece of code to do, simulate the order. So you're seeing the order information like this is in you know in JSON format. Even though uh, NumaFlow does not does not have a hard requirement on the data format, but for this time I'm using JSON. Okay, it's easy to do. And now I'm gonna uh, sh show everything in a UI coming from out of uh, NumaFlow. Is something like this. So I, I installed the, uh, the NumaFlow pipeline in a default namespace in my cluster. Oh, oh sorry. So if I click the default, we're seeing there's a pipeline named EMART order analysis. And you can actually do a lot of different things with UI. So if you want to you know, pause a pipeline or delete pipeline, you can click some other buttons here. But if you want to create a new pipeline, what you can do is click the button here and put the uh, spec and then do a submit. So for this pre-created pipeline, I just click the icon here. We're going to the pipeline view. And uh, similar to the pipeline topology I mentioned in the slides, we have, a, uh, we have an in vertex. If you look at the spec here, we are doing like, it's like Kafka topic in consumer group, and you're not seeing any image or anything like that. So it's like a building Kafka topic can automatically get the data from the Kafka service I installed in my cluster. And it's followed by a map, a UDF here. If you look at the spec, you're seeing we're running an image for it. So I'm going to talk about what's running in this image later on. And then uh, there's a reduced vertex. And if you look at the spec, uh, similarly, there's an image used for it. And then uh, there's a group by a window. So here we're using a fixed uh, one minute window for this aggregation. And then in the end, um, instead of doing only one sync with Kafka, running to Kafka topic, and I actually created uh, two other syncs for this pipeline. One is the lock sync, also uh, it's a user defined, sorry, it's a building sync that we can um, see the output in the system lock for you know, better, for easier visualization. Actually, I created another one. It's like a Grafana sync, which means I'm going to send the aggregate data to a Grafana dashboard. We're going to you know, see all those information, you know, some fancy chart. Okay? So if you look at this pipeline, uh, each box is the vertex. One vertex is nothing but a set of paths. So we auto scale each of vertex. You're seeing a number here, which is a pawn number. You know, for this demo, it's, it's throughput is very low. Right? So we're seeing like a throughput here, one minute, five minutes, and 15 minutes average throughput. Something like that. You also can see some back pressure uh, and backlog. I mean, and, and what is a time a watermark for this data processing? So if you look into the flat map, uh, we actually uh, I actually printed out the 
the flat mapped order information, if you just look at the log here, um, I think it's, where is order? Yeah. So it's a flat map order information. Uh, Somehow, you know, I, I, I miss. I should say nothing beats a live demo, successful live demo. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyways, let's look into the log output. Uh, you will actually see in the log output the aggregate information here. If you look at the, you know, there's a window start time, end time. And uh, you, if you look at the time, it's like a 14, it's UTC time, uh, 1659, which is one minute ago. You're seeing, you know, aggregate information like this for each different category. There's a, you know, a category name and uh, sold items, item account, and revenue, things like that. Um, if we go to the graph final dashboard, you're seeing, you know, I created two charts here. So on the left side is the sold item uh, per category, and on the right side is the revenue. You're seeing you know, very clearly a different category has different sold items and category over there. Okay, uh, back to the slides. Let's look at the pipeline spec. So, NIMA fully said Kubernetes native projects. So we're using Kubernetes CRD to represent uh, the data processing jobs. So uh, we, ne we use the CRD in the end pipeline. And for the pipeline spec, there are two major sections. One is called vertices, which is used to define uh, the data processing steps. Here we have in, which is a source of vertex. And then uh, there's a UDF, two UDFs. One is math, one is reduced. And there's a uh, sync. And this two, the second major section is called edge, which is used to define the relationship between those edges, between those vertices. And now if, let's look into uh, what's running in those map reduce images. On the right side is a map function. Here is a you know, pseudo code reading, uh, reading Golan. So if you look at the function signature, there's nothing special. There's only one thing, it's like a map dot, uh, data. And what do we do in this math function is like we convert the one, uh, original order information to multiple orders and do some data enrichment. And, and there's one more important thing here. So when we return the uh, you know, flap message, we use uh, with keys, which is a category ID. This one will be used for the, the follow uh, reduce vertex. If you look at this function, there's nothing special. It's like you don't see any uh, source and sync. You don't see any upstream vertex or downstream vertex. So the platform will make sure all the messages sent into the source or sent into an upstream vertex will be sent to your function. And what you, you, you don't take care, we don't really care about you know, it's a Kafka or, you know, or you're gonna set, send to another Kafka. You only need to handle the business logic here. And look, look at the right side it's for the reduce. It's very similar. There's you know, function signature, slightly different from the map. There's a you know, reduce of data, it's a channel. So if you're using in, use a Java or Python, you're going to see something slightly different. You're going to see list or iterator. And what you need to do here is some simple math. You add up all the items, add up all the uh, amounts, which is the revenue, right? And then in the end, you uh, set, set the result to a JSON string, what's a window start time, end time, and the category information. And you are not seeing any, you know, uh, map operation or you know, map reduce mentioning in this reduce function. There's no source and sync, and this is the power of a flow. You can easily switch your source and sync to different type of, you know, if let's say you're not using Kafka here, you're using Pulsar, you can just either switch the source. You don't need to make any change to your source code. Okay. All right, I think that's all for the demo. And if you are interested in the demo, here's a QR code. If you want to run it through uh, by yourself in your own Kubernetes cluster, you can take a picture on this QR code. It'll take you like five, ten, five to 10 minutes to uh, run on your own, lab, own, own Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we just saw a demo which is running in a line shape or a tree shaped pipeline. Actually, you can do way more, uh, way more complicated than that. So the first picture uh, shows you know, running a NumaFlow pipeline with multiple source and multiple things. So let's say you have a, you have a data source coming from 
Kafka and, and HTTP. You don't need to write two different pipelines to do it. You can combine those two different sources into one pipeline, and, and that's it, right? And this one showcases a, a joining uh, use case that uh, you can uh, join multiple upstream vertices into the same downstream vertex. And the joining vertex could be a map joining or a reduced joining. And this one is even more interesting. We support cycling, which means you can send a message to someone in front of you or even send to yourself. So this is very useful when you want to do some sort of reprocessing or retwine. We also have side input support. And side input is a very important feature in stream data processing that uh, you can broadcast all the changes to your data processing unit without interruption or pipeline. Quickly summarize uh, what is NumaFlow. NumaFlow is a streaming data processing native Kubernetes native platform that uh, here Kubernetes native means it's not something, not only something running on Kubernetes, but also leverage Kubernetes native feature to build the platform. It's very lightweight. We actually have uh, many open source community users are using NumaFlow in edge devices without any internet access. It's a language agnostic platform. Uh, we have four different language support right now. You can use this language to write your own user-defined source function, uh, user-defined function or user-defined thing. Python, Golang, Rust, and, and, and Java. Technically, we support uh, any different language. And we also have a lot of building source and things. You don't need to write any code if you use those kind of connectors to connect to a source and thing. And we have auto-scaling feature out of the box which means we auto-scale uh, based each of vertex based on traffic and load. If there is no traffic, we're going to auto-scale all the way down to zero. And this is our open source community uh, use case. People are using NumaFlow to do anomaly detection, uh, do IoT data processing, and some of them are doing signal processing, fraud detection, et cetera. And I think that's all for uh, our talk. If you are interested in NumaFlow, and here's a QR code, we'll take you to our GitHub repository. And we have Slack channel over there. If you want, uh, you have any question, you can join the Slack channel and connect with us. Thank you. And, and I think we are open for questions. Yeah, sorry, I think uh, in, uh, it was a successful demo just because I clicked the wrong container. <laughs> so if you look at this container, UDF here, we're seeing those flat map order information right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Successful demo. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so in a few words, how would you compare um, NumaFlow with something like Apache Beam running on top of a, a, Apache Flink with an operator? The way you see is that um, Apache Fling, Beam, etc., are very Airflow popular data processing engines, but NumaFlow is a general processing data processing system. We support the same data model, which includes the um, time series model with uh, sessionization and everything. Um, but the main power is that you could write it in any language, and it is very native to Kubernetes. For example, in Flink, it's mostly you checkpoint and rollback. This is all about moving data forward. And um, you could even uh, replace these vertices with, for example, it could be a polyglot pipeline, meaning you could have a middle vertex written in Python, and that's how we do anomaly detection at Intuit. So the core one vertex will be a ML pipeline, ML vertex which is deployed on a GPU that can scale independently on the whole system. So this is more like, um, this uses most of the technologies of Kubernetes, native to Kubernetes, so that we are able to scale differently. Now, if you are into pure data processing, and if you are running a Java, like most of our data engineers who are using Java, Flink sounds fine, but this is more about for everyone, streaming for everyone, that includes friend and developers too. Thank you. One, two. Oh. 
Yeah, thank you for a great demo. Uh, I also work at e-commerce, so I have the same problem of just streaming data and then enriching uh, data from source to sync, adding like embeddings to orders and like category and store items and such. Uh, so I was wondering like how NumaFlow is different from Airflow or Dexter? Because like we are in the process of selecting um, yeah. vendors, so it's kind of Airflow is more similar to Argo workflow, where you have batch system, right? Meaning you start off with the work and then you finish the work and you move to the next vertex. This is streaming, meaning you can imagine that these processing systems are never going to end. Right, you, uh, you could, like, streams are coming from Kafka and you keep processing over and over and over, right? So these are long running systems that is being used in NumaFlow. So users use NumaFlow as Airflow, as a replacement for Airflow because we have something called map streaming. So for every input, you can stream out the result early. So uh, there, I believe there is a, a, a car a vehicle um, uh, user, like I, I couldn't reference it because they're not in the users.md, but they use it for map processing. So they download map and they use uh, NumaFlow like Airflow so that they can stream the result out. The, yeah, the one word difference will be one is stream processing, another is batch processing. Yeah, the major difference is, about, you know, Airflow is about uh, batch processing. We actually came from Argo workflow community. So a lot of users in Argo uh, community are asking, you know, are you able to support streaming uh, in Argo workflow? Actually, that's not doable. So that's why we have this project. Hi, I have a bit of a more technical question. Uh, do you have some system for like persistence and data or it's on completely on pods? We, uh, so every, the data movement is, so at any point we don't lose or corrupt data. So the, what happens between data movement is we move it through a rough protocol so that data is never lost. That is inherently managed by the platform. Right, so, it's, so it leaves on the platform when that's it's current. moved. Yeah, that's the responsibility of the platform to make sure that no lost data should ever be corrupted or lost. So we have something called in there, so buffers, uh, running behind the scene, uh, and then the data movement from one vertex to another actually is sitting in a raft-based persistent layer, so we want to make sure there's no data loss. Thank you. Hi, so uh, one question from my side. Uh, so if we have a Kafka consumer and a producer, right, so does Numapa fit in the between producer and the consumer or it can go beyond, you know, like a, when it produces then consume, is it fit in between or is it consumed to another downstream applications? It is mostly consumed, to, so you can imagine consume to produce and again consume back, so correct, um, correct. You, you could change it how, chain it however you want. But it can fit either way. That's okay. correct, that's correct. Okay, thanks. So what would be involved in writing a uh, custom sync? It's as simple as writing a custom map. As simple as that. Um, uh, there is no, not, nothing more complex than that. You'll get all the features best just by implementing around five lines of code. Yes. Um, we have, Intuit has a booth uh, for both for ArgoCon and for the KubeCon. Uh, we will be there. Uh, please come by. We'll sh show you some real demos to real pipelines running for both uh, streaming data processing and for ML. So this is an example of coding. Go in to write a customer sync. What you need to do is just to have a function like this, function like this, and you start a main function. <laughs> 